This is the Sandown circuit, 15 miles from the city of Melbourne. Nearly two miles around, it's a power circuit with long, fast straights and tight corners. The S's at the top end of the course are testing on brakes, tyres and suspensions. For a standard touring car to last six hours here, everything has to be just right. Still right away. That's another gear. Which brings us then to Dunlop Bridge, very fast, approach and wide. Shell Corner, the fastest on the circuit, is followed by Peters, the slowest. At this circuit on November the 21st, 1965, a gruelling test of series production cars was held. They call it the Sandown International Six Hour Race. Our film is about this race and... This is a story about two cars, a man, his mechanics and his drivers. The man is Alec Mildren, former Grand Prix winner and Australian champion driver. He owns and manages the biggest racing team in the Southern Hemisphere. His chief mechanic, Glen Abbey, and assistant Stuart Randall have prepared the Alphas, the GTA and the TI. His drivers are Dr. Roberto Bussinello, flown out specially for this race from Italy, where he's an Alpha Works driver. He will share the wheel of the GTA with Sydney driver Ralph Setch. Frank Gardner, an Australian international driver based in England, has also been brought out by Mildren. He will share the wheel of the TI with Kevin Bartlett, the rising young driver of the Mildren team. But a six-hour race needs more than drivers and cars. It needs long and careful preparation. In the Mildren workshops, which are also the service department of his prestige car business, the team mechanics prepare the cars. Engines are dismantled and reassembled with precision and care. Every function is checked to factory specification. Both cars have basically the same engine, a twin overhead cam unit of 1,570 cubic centimetres. The gearboxes in both cars are standard alpha and have five forward speeds. The TI is a five-seat family saloon with a top speed in excess of 120 miles an hour. The GTA is the sports version of the Alfa Romeo GT and is a four-seater with a light alloy body and is therefore faster than the TI. Every day for three weeks before the race, the team practiced refueling and tyre changes. Every second saved here will keep the pit stops down to a basic minimum. Drivers as well as mechanics have to familiarise themselves with the correct procedure. Finally, everything that could be done had been done, and the cars were loaded for the 600 mile journey to Melbourne and the Sandown circuit. Practice day, a day of worries and decisions for the team manager. However, he has experts to help and guide him from the many companies who actively and financially support motorsport. Final preparations are made. Glen Abbey protects the car cooling system from holding by stones by adding a special leak preventative. An expert is available to help the team manager select the correct type of spark plug for the running conditions of the race. The tyre companies support the entrance by offering tyre changing and wheel balancing services. By testing their products under these severe conditions, these companies are able to benefit the average motorist. Mildren checks the fueling and notes how many gallons go into each car. Mileage during practice will affect his race day strategy. All is ready and the cars are on the track for the start of practice. Bussinello is first away. All the field are out now, trying to better their class lap times. Some cars didn't get very far. Mildren holds up a plug spanner. This means, come in on your next time around, it's time to change drivers. The 
crew fly into action. The weeks of practice have taught them to work as an efficient team. Businello has very little English, so one of his friends acts as an interpreter to tell Mildred about the car and track conditions. Some cars are trying just a little too hard. Mildred has to keep an eye on the main opposition. People like Harry Firth, long distance expert, Peter Manton, who be leading the BMC attack in a Mini Cooper S with Brian Foley. In Cortinas are Bob Jane and Canadian Alan Moffitt, who has a BRM engine Cortina. Practice times were good. Gardner and Bartlett in the TI got around in 1.27.8. In the GTA, Bussinello and Satch managed a staggering 1.25.9. Moffat in the Lotus Cortina did 1.27.2, so he'll be the man to watch. Mildren is happy with practice, but the race will not be over and won until five o'clock tomorrow afternoon. A lot of things can and did happen in that time. Race day, and Bussinello and Gardner will drive the Alphas for the first session. Moffat screams away along the grass. By shell, he's amongst the leaders. He takes them at Peters. Now one of the race sensations. Charlie Smith in the Mini has blown a brake hose. At 80 miles an hour, he plows into the back of the Seton Firth Cortina, who in turn hit Bob Jane. Smith and Seton are out of the race a half a mile from the start. By the time he reaches Dunlop, Alan Moffat was so far in front on the first lap that one of our cameramen thought he was a late starter trying to catch up. With Moffat treating the race as a five-lap sprint, the field begins to string out. On lap two, Bussinello starts to bring the GTA through and reduce the gap to Moffat, who is already lapping some of the slower cars. Bussinello was in second place and began to press Moffat, who was cornering wildly. In the meantime, Jane brought his damaged car into the pits for inspection. Bussinello presses Moffat coming out of the S's, causing him to break late. Moffat has a locking brake and punishes his tyres. Bussinello repeats the performance at Shell, and only expert driving keeps Moffat on the track. Next time round, the GTA passes the Cortina in the S's. Alan Moffat lost his lead for the rest of the race. Bussinello sets out to open the gap on the other leaders and the floaty roar of the GTA is heard in Dunlop Strait. Gardner in the meantime is playing his part in the plan and brings the TI through the field, lapping steadily in the 130s. Moffat nearly loses his car in shell as a locking wheel grinds a flat on his tyre. At 11.42, Moffat brings 28 into the pits. His left front tyre looks like a hexagonal nut. He 
ignores pleas for a tyre change and rejoins the field. The two Alphas are now running first and second overall and in their class. The time is 11.50. Alan Moffat's tyre finally lets go in Shell, and he nearly cleans up pit row as he comes to rest. More drama at three minutes past 12, when the Manton Foley Mini, number 47, bursts its gearbox housing, putting them out of the race. and Holden Mini, number 48, takes over and forges through the class. Five hours to go. At 12.20, cars start coming in for driver changes and fuel. Some of the bigger cars have already been in. one o'clock and Mildred calls in the GTA for fuel and a change of driver. The pit crew are ready. They will check the pads on the four disc brakes, measure the tread on the tyres and put in eight gallons of fuel. The car is in and a worried Mildred asks Bussinello if he's happy with the sound of the car. Bussinello agrees all is not well. Mildred makes a quick decision and elects to carry on with Satch as the driver. The car is out again in under two minutes and is still in the lead. Jim Palmer, New Zealand champion driver, has taken over the Moffat Lotus but is hampered by brake trouble. One twenty-three and action in Shell Corner. Bill Burns goes wide in the Jaguar, Jerry Merritt in the Renault swerves to avoid him, the rest happens quickly. Merritt is not hurt but the car is written off. Both Renaults are now out of the race. In the meantime, the Jane car, which has been out for 30 laps with brake trouble, rejoins the field. Tragedy for the Mildred team as Satch brings in the sick GTA to retire. The TI is now in first place, with the Poon Holland Cortina 31, an entry from Hong Kong, well back second. The time is 1.30. Bussinello's Italian friends sadly wheel their hero's car to the dead car park. Satch gets a word of comfort from Bartlett. Mildred must make a decision whether to keep Gardner going or bring him in to look at the race. A word with lap scorer Gail Satch, the TI is four laps ahead. A word with Bartlett. Mildred tells him to regain lost laps and then lap steadily. The decision is made. The crew is ready. They realize there is no time to be lost on this stop. Bonnet open, check oil, water, fuel in, inspect brakes. Gardner tells the young driver of the condition of the circuit, where oil and rubber have built up. A new tyre was not needed, but Milton ordered one in the interest of safety. But it is in and away in two minutes. The time is 1.52.
By two o'clock, Bartlett had regained the lap lost in the pit stop and was four laps ahead of the Poon Holland car. George Reynolds in the Jane car decides to rejoin the race. Russellhead Cooper is in with the bonnet loose. Shortly after, the car suffered an internal hemorrhage and retired. The hind hall Fraser Mini blows a tyre and makes a stop. At this stage, the second car overall, the Poon Holland Cortina, lost a lot of time when the boot wouldn't close. Five and a half minutes later, they wired it down. Steve Holland sets out to make up the lost laps. The TI is now eight laps in front. When the lead is down to six laps, Milton realises it's time for his number one driver to take over and gives Bartlett the signal to come in. This time the two offside tyres are changed brake pads inspected and fuel added. Mildren takes off the relief driver sticker. The drivers compare notes. Gardner is in and away in 150. Five hours, the TI is first by six laps, and car 31 is one lap ahead of the Moffat Palmer Lotus. But the passing hours and the pace is being felt by a lot of cars. For many of the bigger cars, handling has become a problem. With their brakes worn to metal, they're overshooting the corners. Many have changed brake pads and linings. The TI by now has made over 4,000 brake applications and many gear changes, but has not needed any attention in the handling department. The Peebles Mustang is clouted by the Crea Gross Bellet. The Bellet spins out and calls into the pits for a check. The TI continues to lap steadily, but Steve Holland has pulled out all the stops to catch it. By 4.45, he is four laps behind. Stewart Triumph 2000 is blowing smoke and sounding sick, but some people seem to have lost interest in the race. Three minutes to go and the TI seems late. Glen Abbey looks back up the straight, but here he is and a relieved Mildred gives the last pit signal. Mildred checks with the timekeepers just to make sure, but it's five o'clock and the chequered flag is out waiting for Gardner and the TI. In the meanwhile, the Palmer Moffat Cortina has retired at Lukey's with a blown diff, less than a mile from the finish. Frank Gardner crosses the line 6 hours, 1 minute, 1.2 seconds and 462 miles after he left the grid. Now the strain is off the Mildren pit. Alec Mildren can relax his tired muscles after 6 hours of standing on the pit apron. Gardner and Bartlett average 77 miles an hour for the 6 hours. Who said the TI wasn't a family car? 
Busanello's Italian cheer squad at last are happy. Now the laurels of victory. For Gardner and Bartlett, a well-deserved win. The TI, Old Faithful, has won for the second year in succession. It's a triumph for the drivers, a triumph for Glen Abbey, Stuart Randall and the pit crew for their preparation. And it's a triumph for Alec Mildred, who has faith in the cars that he sells.